And for insight on today's proceedings, we are joined by prominent New York defense attorney Arthur Idal. Let's just get back to that point here. I mean, why do you, could you even begin to think that, that Donald Trump would try to make this false equivalence with, oh, the gag order means I can't testify in my own defense? Yeah, I mean, the, it's a little scary, and, and I don't say that lightly. I mean, you kind of learn in like sixth or seventh or eighth grade, like every American has a right to defend themselves. Maybe he had a little hangover from the gag order proceeding that took place earlier in the day where the judge heard evidence from the prosecutor about President Trump uh, violating the gag order four different times, I believe. Two on Cohen, uh, one on Pecker, and the one that he seemed to be very focused on was on the jury. President Trump said, oh, I can't get a fair trial with this jury. That's the one thing I know that the judge is going to be very guarded about. He's not going to let Trump say anything about the jury. But to, a, to for the, for the, for the, a guy who was the president of the United States and wants to be the president of the United States, for him to confuse a gag order with his right to testify at a trial is troubling, and that's the sweetest way um, I could say it. Of course, every defendant has the right to testify, and that's one part of the trial that is 100% their right. In other words, their lawyer can't stop them from testifying. If they want to testify, I'll tell you the truth, even if they want to testify falsely, even if they want to tell a lie and you know it, you still have to put them on the stand and you just say, I understand, Mr. Defendant, you'd like to make a statement to the jury. And then you don't participate. Mm -hmm. You just allow them to make that statement if you know they're going to go up there and lie. But every defendant can testify. There's no gag order that stops that. Staying on the theme of the gag order for a moment, there was that moment where a, a Trump attorney approached the judge and said, well, hey, there are these articles that I'd like you to see uh, that basically it's legal counsel be being critical of this trial and Trump would like to post them. Can he post them? Why Why go through all of that? I mean, why just not post them? Because I will tell you, Lindsay, because I've been in that position and you have incoming fire and, you know, and you and your instinct, especially as a lawyer, you, you know, you want to advocate, you want to defend. And the judge kind of has your hand, not kind of, does have you handcuffed to retort and, and your instinct and what you're taught and what you've practiced is to retort. So I think he's actually doing the right thing. Like, hey, OK, judge, how about this? Give me permission to say this. I don't want to violate your order. I don't want to be disrespectful. Can I do this and let the judge make a ruling from there? And the judge was on a borderline of making a ruling against Michael Cohen as well to tell the jurors, uh, uh, to tell the prosecutor about what he can or cannot do. So this whole gag order thing, it's a little bit of a distraction, but it's a way of the judge maintaining order of the courtroom. Uh, we also heard that audio that we heard a clip of in, in Aaron's piece there, 2018, Michael Cohen saying, you know, Trump hates that we made this payment. Now, now Donald Trump has alleged that he didn't know about the payment that was made, that Michael Cohen kind of went rogue and, and paid her off, right? But there is this focus and emphasis on we did it. Do you think that that'll be effective? No, so that's a great, great point. And I've been involved in trials where there have been audio tapes that are just devastating to my client. And what you just did is what I have to do sometimes. You break down every word, like every syllable of every word, and you try to twist it and contort it the best way you can in your favor. And both sides do it. The prosecutor does it and the defense does it. There's going to be more, there are going to be more tapes that we're going to hear. But I will tell you, Lindsay, what really is lining up with all of this evidence is that this happened, but so far there hasn't been a direct connection mm. to Trump. And Michael Cohn is going to be the one who makes that connection. And all I'm going to say is if I'm the prosecutor putting Michael Cohn on the stand, I understand I could win that case, but I'm going to say a prayer before he goes on the stand. <laughs> is that right? Okay. Such a pleasure always to hear from you and kind of download the case. Uh, appreciate you coming on, Mr. Pleasure's Idol. all mine.